Good Friday morning, everyone. Taking a live look over Ball Arena right now. Fans hoping to see the Avs beat the Dallas Stars in Game 3 there tomorrow. That series now tied 1-1 after last night's game. Did not turn out <laughs> the way we were hoping. Hoping for that, you know, last-minute uh, yeah. turnaround like yeah. of the now previous it, game. Now like, it's a real series, right, Ed? Yeah. But at <laughs> least they stole one in Dallas, which is the good yeah, news. That's, that's, that's tough to do, yeah. yeah so and now we're back that. home. So. Yeah. And now we're back home. And mm -hmm. You know, we'll win these two, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the wish the weather could be as big a winner, but we have some showers and thunders under here. It is Mother's Day, yeah. unfortunately, not going to be great. It, yeah, we get seasonal temperatures is the best we'll do out of this, and that's in the upper 60s for your Saturday and Sunday. Otherwise, showers and thunder, thunderstorms will be scattered around. So take a look at what we have going on right now. 43 degrees at this hour. We're mostly in the 30s, 40s, even a 50 degree reading over the eastern plains. We're looking at 20s and 30s for the high country. We've got 30s and 40s out to the west. As we look at our forecast today, mostly cloudy skies as yesterday. A lot of the heavy showers and thunderstorms were to the south. It's tough to get them up into our area. So 58 degrees, just a few scattered showers and thunderstorms once again today. Maybe even a little sunshine in the afternoon. 68 degrees tomorrow. Showers and thunderstorms are back on Mother's Day as well with a high of 69 degrees. 73 on Monday. We keep the showers and storms around as we do on Tuesday. Pretty much the same with 75 degrees. Then Wednesday, the next system comes our way. Cooler conditions, 64 on Wednesday. Showers and storms in the forecast. Ed, thank you so much. And you just mentioned those scattered showers. We're actually seeing it right now up and down I-25 for those all the way down in Castle Rock. Very different story for those taking I-25 and 38th Avenue. So let's give you those drive times. If you are taking I-25 later this afternoon, uh, northbound I-25, Castle Rock to uh, I-225, that's going to be a 16-minute drive. You can see all of those wet road conditions up and down I-25. Again, that's all the way down south in Castle Rock. Now, for those in Boulder, westbound 36, Denver to Boulder, that is going to be a 17-minute drive. We are in the green. No crashes to report this morning. All right, thanks so much for that, Brianna. Well, today the trial for the man accused of killing a volunteer firefighter during a street racing incident is set to start. 20-year-old Jeremy Roca faces charges of murder and attempted murder. Now, news reporter Brianna Clark joins us live from Adams County right now. Brianna, a witness saw what happened. Yeah, several actually. The victim's wife and his three children were in the car with him when it happened. It has been nearly two years since John Jaros was shot and killed while driving down I-70 in Aurora. He was on his way to a campsite for Father's Day weekend. His wife, who was sitting in the passenger seat at the time, told police she saw four cars racing. And after her husband passed them on the left shoulder, she heard four gunshots. John was hit in the head. Police say his wife grabbed the wheel and somehow she managed to get the truck off the highway safely. We spoke to John's sister back in 2022 as she prepared for her bro brother's funeral. From that moment where you look over and you know your husband's dead and yet you take over and make sure that everybody else is still okay. And those poor kids, they had to watch him be shot in front of them. Who does that? Yeah, John was the assistant chief of the Glen Haven Area Volunteer Fire Department. Police arrested Roca nearly a week after the shooting. His trial is set to start at 9 o'clock this morning as, and is expected to last about six days today and all of next week. Reporting live, Brianna Clark, 9 News. You think about the details of that yeah. case, and it's just so horrifying, and mm -hmm. you feel for what the family's going to be facing over the next several days. We appreciate the, the update, Brianna. An intersection at Colfax and Osage is now clear after protesters on the Auraria campus spent hours blocking it last night. They've since returned to the encampment on the Tivoli Quad. The Auraria campus released a statement late last night saying it was, quote, escalating tensions of this encampment situation. They also said they called in Denver police for help. Human waste on and around the quad has been observed as a result of poorly maintained temporary bathroom facilities that the protesters have illegally placed on the quad. Uh, we've received uh, complaints from parents and students to campus administrators with pictures of feces near and around their vehicles parked near the quad. Auraria says hazmat crews from the state's health department came to remove some of the waste there. They also say they believe more than half of the protesters are not students from the campus. There are still questions about why campus officers at Auraria zip tied the doors of a building with protesters inside. MSU Denver's president had originally said protesters did it, but that was not true. MSU Denver's claim was immediately challenged by protesters, and soon the video emerged of the uh, campus police zip tying the door.
Jaguars. MSU Denver removed the false claim from an online statement. Auraria campus leaders said officers zip tied the doors because those doors would not lock while a student union was in a lockdown. We asked a use of force expert about using zip ties on doors to a building while people are inside. He said that he has never heard of such a thing. All sorts of um, bad things can happen. You could have a fire. You could, who knows uh, what it is. Um, you know, regardless of the odds, that's not, you know, we, we don't take risks like that. So I don't understand why you would uh, forcibly, uh, you restrain individuals inside a building. Uh, you know, it's not, it's just unheard of. I've never run, run into that situation. We also asked Denver Fire if they were okay with police locking people inside a building from the outside, but they did not respond. Protesters have started a new encampment this week. This time it's on DU's campus. They started gathering on Carnegie Green near DU's administrative building on Thursday morning. The protesters have several demands, including that the university divest from companies supporting Israel. The university says they put up fences and tables in the middle of the grass to create a space for dialogue. I think there could be some healthy dialogue here. There could be some good conversations because I think especially in the Jewish community, we, we want to come together to have a conversation. Uh, there, we're very involved in, in this conversation in particular for many decades. DU has issued an interim protest policy saying the encampment can stay, but only with protesters who are part of the DU community. The university says it has the right to remove anyone else without notice. We will continue to follow the latest on campus protests here in Colorado and bring you the latest as it develops. You can download our Nine News app and stay up to date on the latest news, traffic and weather throughout the day. This is free to download in the Apple and Google Play stores. New this morning, the Colorado Springs Airport is honoring, honoring veterans of World War II with a moving tribute. It's called the Wall of Heroes. The new art piece is meant to honor 144 U.S. soldiers from Colorado who gave their life during World War II. Now when people walk up to the second floor at the Colorado Springs Airport, they will be able to see the 144 white and gold ribbons. Each of those is labeled with the hero's name and rank on them. Jamie Grandy is one of the two artists who created the piece. She says it took about four months to gather all of the information they needed about those heroes. And once they had it, Grandy says it took them about two weeks to create. Pretty fiddly. There was a lot of measuring and trying again to get them all the same size. Um, many people have very long names, <laughs> so that was a little harder. But it, um, it was a pretty basic design, but the execution was a little bit impressive, I suppose. Grandy says being able to present something like this to an airport that helps transport thousands of military men and women is a privilege.